Hi everyone, it's finally time for us to build our first game. The game has a purple monster collecting stars as it hops up and down on the screen. It's very simple, but has all we need to learn how to build a simple game in Coco's Crater. To begin, we need to get the assets for the game. Click on the link in the description of this video to get to our GitHub account. Click on the download button and download the zip file. You don't have to be a member to download, so just wait until the download starts. Now, unzip this file and add it to a folder in your disk drive that Coco's Creator is not on. This is important as Coco's Creator and your project cannot be on the same disk drive. Now open Coco's Creator and choose the Open Other option. Go to the Start underscore Project folder and click Choose That Folder. We are running this on Windows, so if you have a Mac, it might be slightly different. Now that you picked your folder, Coco's Creator will begin to create your project. You might get an error sign, but don't worry, this is just because the project was built a very long time ago. Just proceed and allow Coco's to update the project. Now, let's look at what is in this project. Looking in the Assets window, it has an audio folder that is filled with two files. You can test them out by clicking on the asset and pressing play in the properties section. We also now have a textures folder. Inside we have all the images. This includes our background, a play button, ground tiles, a purple monster, and a star. We also have a bitmap font file that includes the font and the coding for the font. Building these fonts won't be shared in this video, but it is talked about in our documentation at our website. All right, now that we have all of our assets we need to build this game, let's start adding nodes to the project. Let's start by dragging the background onto the canvas. Make sure your mouse is exactly on the canvas. When you let go of your mouse button, you're going to see that the background is now a member of the canvas, along with the main camera. You can also see that it has appeared in the scene window. Now we need to make the background bigger so that it fills up the entire canvas. To do this, we're going to highlight the background and use the size editing buttons found above the node tree. The first one moves the image by clicking on the red arrow to move it left and right and the green arrow moves it up and down. The next one allows you to rotate the image. The next one lets us stretch it from the horizontal or vertical. And the final one lets us drag every corner. If you don't want to use these or want to be more specific, you can also use the scaling values in your properties. Now let's go ahead and let's make this background a bit bigger than the canvas. I'll stretch out these sides. And there you go. If you want to see if it covers the entire canvas, just hover over the canvas node to get a look at the canvas area. Also, quick tip, to make sure your background fits most phones, it's best to scale it to a size larger than most phone resolutions. I'm gonna make this background 1360 by 760 by editing the size in the properties window. Great, our background is complete. Now let's add some ground to this game. Just like before, add the ground to the canvas group. I want this ground to be on the bottom, so I'm moving it into position zero negative 250. You might have already seen that the midpoint of the canvas is always 0, 0. This is to help you later on with placement of objects in the game. We'll explain in a future lesson why it's so important with different phone resolutions. Now let's stretch the ground across the background using the same method we used for the background.
you should end up with a size of 1350 by 250. Great, now we have our background and our ground is complete. It's time we add our protagonist into the game. Grab the purple monster from our assets and let's drag him into the canvas group. To make sure the monster is always in front of the ground, have the purple monster node below the ground node. If you don't, you could have your player falling behind it like this. Now let's go ahead and give the monster a name. Click on the name Purple Monster in the properties and let's change it to something fun and different like Player. Great job. It's time to give him some type of rule so he's always above the ground. The easiest way to do this is to change the anchor point to his feet and tell the program that the monster's anchor point can never fall beyond this point. So to do this, click on the small circle you see in the monster. This is the anchor point. Drag it to its feet. Great, that was too easy. Now the hard part, coding all the monster's movements and other actions. We can do all of this within Coco's Creator by giving our monster a script, telling it what it can and can't do. Just like in the movies, a script gives the nodes directions on what to do. These nodes don't know how to improvise or overact so they just follow the directions you give it. To build a place for all the scripts to live in the Assets section, in the Assets window, right-click the Assets folder and choose Create, then Folder. A new folder will appear. Let's change its name to Scripts with a lowercase s. Now let's add scripts in there. Right-click on the Scripts folder and create a new JavaScript. You could also use TypeScript instead if you're better at TypeScript, but in this lesson, we'll be using JavaScript. Let's name this script Player with a capital P and look over at the Properties area. You can see that we already have a pre-built Java code in there, but we need to make our own. So let's open it up. Since you have installed Visual Studio Code, you can use it to edit your player script. To do this, click on File, then Settings, and when the settings window opens, click on the data editor tab and you'll see an option for an external script editor. Choose default or Visual Studio Code as your option and then the browse button. You'll need to find where the executable named code is on your computer. This could be done by right-clicking on the program in the Start menu for Windows and then right-clicking to view Properties and then finding its target. Now we can go ahead and add that to Coco's and we are ready to edit. Double-click on Player Script and Visual Studio Code will open up. Once all that is done, let's get to coding. As you can see, there are two parts to this code. We have some help information for Cocos Creator, and we have some code and comments in a cc.class function. The cc.class function is a global function that allows you to add properties into your nodes. So if you want to give a new property to a node that you can customize, you need to declare it in the cc.class. You can read more about this in our documentation from our link in the description. Let's add some new properties such as how high the player can jump, for how long, how fast, and the acceleration ratio. To do this, let's add these properties into the code. Pause your video now and add these items. Now that we have this code, let's save our code and this script into our purple monster. Go back into Coco's Creator and click on the Player node in the Node tree and go to the Properties window. Click on the Add Component button and you will see there's a lot of different components. We don't have time to look at every one of them. So let's just move to the Add Custom Component and select Player. If all has been done correctly, you will now see that Player has been added to the Properties 
and all your options are ready to be edited. You can play with these any way you want, but for this tutorial, let's keep the numbers what we have already. Now that we have all the items we need for jumps, let's have him jumping up and down all the time, like you saw in the example. Right now, the monster is set to jump up and down in a linear path. If we look at some platform games, usually the jump starts very fast and then slows down at the peak before speeding back down to the ground. To make this happen in our game, go back to the scripts folder of the assets window and double click on the player's script. Let's add a new method into our CC class. Let's name it set jump action and give it two functions, jump up and jump down. Pause the video if you need to copy the code from the screen. These two variables are using the cc.moveby function. This function will calculate the jump by the duration we set, the height, and how the easing will be. Here we have it as cc.ease cubic action out and cc.ease cubic action in. This is determined by Coco's action system inside Coco's. The choice of easing comes from one of these options. You can see some move quickly early and some end quickly. Some do some weird things, so try it yourself by adding it into your own code. Finally, we need to invoke the jumping to happen continuously. So we return to our CC function and add a repeat forever to the sequence of jump up and jump down. We also need to make our player start jumping when the game loads by adding the method onLoad. Now we can initialize the first jump when the game loads and it will go ahead and run continuously. Great, let's save. It may ask you to create a .fire file. This is a file needed to save all information inside your scene. Let's name it game and save it in our assets folder of your game. Now let's click the preview button and see how it runs. You should see your purple monster jumping up and down with a background and some ground. Great, let's exit this and do one more thing for this lesson. Let's add some left and right movements for our monster. Let's go back to the player script and add a few more things. Let's add a method called on key down and on key up. This tells Coco's creator that when an event happens, you have to stop your code and do that action before continuing to the next step of your code. Here we're using the cc.macro.key function that tells the computer that if you press this button on your keyboard, you want something to happen. We have both the A and D button having the acceleration moving either left or right. We have the same thing here on on key up, but with the acceleration as false, telling the game to stop the acceleration. Now that we have the left and right button set, we need to tell the program to listen to these keys during the game. So let's go back to the onload function and add our initializing code as well as our destroy code for when we quit the game. If you wanted to do this on Android or iOS, you would need to use a different function for when you tap on the screen. Check out our documentation in the description to see how this is done. Now we can preview our work and we can adjust the height and other properties. Let's play around for a bit.
it seems we need to do a little bit of adjustments. Let me change the height to 150, the duration to 0.3, the movement speed to 400, and the acceleration to 1000. Now let's try this again. Ah, that's exactly how I want it. Now we can start to add some gameplay to our game. So let's take a break and we'll start getting into some gameplay in our next lesson. So go have fun with your game, get a nice cold drink, and hit the subscribe button so you're subscribed to all the latest tutorials and interviews given by Coco's. So I'll see you in the next video.